Hello, everyone. Good morning. We welcome our guests, everybody that's new here. Um, we welcome Hosanna here. Um, I got a phone call about 10 minutes before I, got, before I was coming here, and my brother Dean wasn't feeling good. He had heart surgery, a little bit of surgery on his heart, and he wasn't feeling good. He told me that he was not going to be able to make it. So I got called 10 minutes before getting here, and um, let's see what God's going to do. I know Dean's a hard worker, and uh, I knew him for, when I saw him when he first came into the ministry here. Um, and I was his house manager, I was his campus manager, and I seen the good things that he did towards the ministry. I seen his struggles, and I seen his good and his bad. And I tell you, um, I love the brother to death because we, we was brought up together into this ministry. And um, this ministry is not an easy place. It's not made for everybody because not everybody is willing to do whatever it takes to change their life and do what needs to be done to get a new life. And um, one thing I, I learned from being here, you do have to learn how to die to yourself. You do have to learn how to surrender to, to have a new life because the old man is always speaking to us and is trying to find an, an access to get back in, to take you back to the world. And we're not of this world, even though we're in it. We're not supposed to walk as this world. We're supposed to be walking in a godly atmosphere of an example. Amen. You know, this is the things that God had put upon us when, we was walking, when he was walking on this earth. And he said that we should be like him. He said he put the forefront to show us what we need to do. And to guide us how we need to learn how to walk, speak, hear, listen, and observe things. Everybody with me with this? Amen. Amen. Are we believers in this house? Amen. Do we know that we're not a part of this world anymore? And when you're not a part of the world, you have to cut something off. And that's the old man. That old man's always speaking, isn't he? He's always trying to make you feel good in that sin, doesn't he? Always trying to bring you back into so he can eat you alive and make you a zombie on this earth. Because then you're just existing. You're not living. Jesus said that when you come to him that you may live and live what? More abundantly. And you be springing up like living water. How many of y'all want springing up like living water, being refreshed? So that when you come in this... When you come into somebody's room, when you leave, they're not all bound up in anything, but they're free. Because where you go at, you bring peace. Your shoe's supposed to be the peace of the gospel, right? You're supposed to bring the good news. You're supposed to open up people's hearts. And what they don't like, that's because they got a demon. If they don't believe in what God says. You know, sometimes you speak right out the Bible, and people will look at you like you said it. But it wasn't even your word. Just like Jesus said, when you see me, it's not my ministry. I come in the example of my father. So when you see me speak, I speak the words that he gives me. And I speak them forth. You know, God, God can use any one of us if you're willing to what? Sacrifice yourself. Die to yourself. And be willing to be used. You have to be willing to have the willing attitude. To want to do what he asks you to do. And I promise you, it's not going to be your way. It's not going to be Burger King. It's not going to be comfortable. Because if it's comfortable, then you're not changing. Changing is uncomfortable. It's like having growing pains. You're always getting stretched. Because you want to take more of the world out of you. And put more of himself in you. Amen? Amen. Cool. Well, let's see what we, God has for, for us, because I tell you what, I wasn't expecting this, but I was expecting it, <laughs> if anybody understands what I'm saying, because we're supposed to be ready where? In season and out of season, and we're supposed to trust in his word that what he placed within us in his time, he'll speak it out of us, amen? So it's not we that's going to speak it, but him. 
that speak through the will and vessel. If you're fully anointed and you trust in God and you was disciplined and you walked with him, you should know that he's going to be able to do what he said he's going to do. Because he's faithful. When, you've been fa- when we've been faithless, he's still been faithful to complete. Because he's still working on the things that he wanted to complete in us. We're not perfect. We're only perfect in him. Trust me, we got many flaws. I can show you many flaws in me. Just hang around me for a while. You'll see some flaws and you start saying, well, I thought he was, well, you know, he's working on me. He's working. And I guarantee if I hang around you, I guarantee I can find some flaws in you too. (laughs) Because he's working on you. But we have to work out the good. We have to work out. It's our responsibility to work out the good. Because if he let, let the pathway, it's our responsibility to stay on that pathway and follow him. Because the word says, deny thyself. Pick up your cross and follow. But if we don't deny ourselves, then we can't pick up no cross. And we can't be an example that others may see so they can believe in something that is real. Something that's real. Do you know he's real? You know, Coca-Cola had that one song saying nothing but the real thing. Remember that? They didn't know they was talking about the wrong thing. <laughs> we should be telling them there's something realer than Coca-Cola. And that's Jesus. That's his Holy Spirit. And that's the Father that thought it all up to bring everything together. Amen? Amen. So let's go to Titus 2. No, I'm sorry. First, let's go to Philipp- I mean, um, Psalms 119. Go to Psalms 119. I was walking to jail the other day, and before I came in, God spoke a word over me, and I couldn't understand why he brought this word, and I brought it to pastor, and I said, well, I'll just tuck it away and use it for another time. But God knows things and situations that happen. And before we even start, I want to pray over uh, Dean right quick and ask for a swift healing over him. So, Father, we come together right now in your personal name, Jesus, Lord, and we thank you for who you are and who you are within us. And, Lord, we speak your word towards Dean Blankenship right now. And, Lord, we speak life upon his, his body. We speak healing upon his heart. We speak that by your stripes that he is healed, whole, and complete. Father, I ask that at this time that you have him, let him rest upon you. Speak to him. Minister to him as he ministered to you. Allow him to be complete when when everything is done, that he be able to have testimonies to tell people of the goodness of who you are in the time that he needed you in this time that you may get honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's go to... um, Well, let's go to 119, verse 97. And the word of the Lord says, Oh, how I love your law, and it it is my meditation all the day. You, through my commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep your precepts have restrained my feet from every evil way, that I may keep your word. I have not departed from your judgment, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I give understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. 
Your words is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And I've sworn and confirmed that I'll keep your righteous judgment. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, I pray, the freely offering of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgment. My life is continually in my hands, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever and to very end. The teaching that God was speaking to me was about his word. His word is everlasting. His word never fails. If God has promised something into your life and it don't seem like it was ha- is happening, you just hold on to his word. Because his word is faithful. His word is true. And does not lie to you. There's things that he said his pathway. His pathway will lead you. And guide you. We have to stay on the pathway. No matter what it looks like. I'm going to tell you. To be a believer. And be around young Christians sometimes. It's not easy. Because you know. Young Christians are like little chickens in the coop. They don't know how to get out of it until they learn how to fly and be and transform themselves like an eagle. You know how anybody seen the Transformers? And they had them cars that would ride until they turned to what they really became, where they really was. And then they came out with weapons and they fought and, and they battled. That's how we are. We we come in looking one way. And we don't even know our true identity until God reveals it to us. But then when he reveals it to us, we've got to believe who we are, what he said we are, by his words. His word speaks to us all the time. But then when situation comes, we tend to forget who we are. Because we'll look at the situation and get comfortable of that old man. And we're not supposed to be that old man no more. You're supposed to be a new creation in Christ. That means the anointing is supposed to take place to break that yoke what holds you down from being old so you be transformed to what? The newness of Christ. That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be in examples that others can see. Because they can't see and taste and see the Lord is good. What we're supposed to be is the salt. The flavor. With no flavor... You can't bring people to the Savior because they can't taste. It's bland. You got to understand something. Anything that you have of food, when you put salt on it, it brings flavors to the taste so that it tastes better. So you can eat it. But if you put salt in it and it has no taste to it, you can't enjoy it. And then people can't find what they was really looking for. They might think they're having fun in the world. But we've been to the world. And we found out the dead end. And then we asked for help to get out of it because we didn't like the situation that the world brought to us. Amen? That's what he brought to me. Amen? All right, let's go to Titus 2. Praise God. For those that don't know what Titus is at, it's in the New Testament. (laughs) Just got to have some fun up here. See, some people that don't know me, I like to have fun. But we can have clean fun, and then there's a worldly fun. I'd rather have clean fun so nobody gets hurt, especially me. Because that course suggestion can hurt you. You know that, right? You get somebody offended, boy, it's a bad place. (laughs) It's a bad place (laughs) for them. (laughs) Because you can stay free and they can be all, now they're going to, then unforgiveness comes in. 
<laughs> Bitterness comes in, anger comes in, malice comes in, and they get locked in the birdcage. And they have the key and they don't even know it. And all they have to do is just turn the key of forgiveness and let themselves out. Amen? How many times we got stuck in that? And then you, when you get free, you say, man, what took me so long? <laughs> I should have did that eight days ago. That's sometimes two weeks, years. Sometimes it's just a day. Sometimes it's just a minute. Because the quicker you repent, the quicker you can have access to move forward. You know, you don't have to stay in that place. The quicker you can hear God so you can be free. Because we want to have access to the kingdom, don't we? We want to know what's going on in the kingdom so we can see what's going on in this earth where God wants to place us at so that we can be available for service. And His will. Not of our own, right? And His will. Because we can't do our will because it'll get all burnt up, won't it? Because we will take it and it will be judged at the throne, right? And whatever is left behind, that's all that we're going to have for eternity. And I don't know about you. I want everything. How about you? I'm greedy when it comes to God. I want it all. You know? Because that's eternity. That means forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. That means it doesn't stop. It's like a figure eight. Just keep on going. And that's our home, isn't it? That's our destination. This place here is going to pass away. We have nothing that we're supposed to have here anyhow to call our own because it's his anyhow. So will he let us the lease on, we just use it until it runs out. And then when we get home, that's what we really have. And I don't know what he has for us. He might have some jet, jet skis. and I don't know what you like, but he might have the things that you really desire. And you say, here, son, I got it for you. I was holding this one right for you because nobody can take this from you. You know what I mean? Nobody can take it. Titus 2, verse 7. And the word says in verse 7, In all things, showing yourself to be pattern of good works and doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, and corruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is appointed may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say. To you or of you. So that means that we have to be an example of good deeds. You know, we have to show, put our best foot forward because as we be an example to show others, God is going to be an example to show us. And you have to be around people that show good example so that you can learn how to have good habits. Because bad habits corrupts good habits. And you're around somebody that has bad habits all the time. I mean, we got to be around people that have bad habits sometimes because we have to work with them. But as you come around good habits, you can learn how to be an example and show forth so that when that opportunity in time comes, that you have to make that choice or decision. You'll learn how to make that right choice. Because you're not going to go and make that wrong because you know what it's going to do. It's going to repeat itself again. And it's going to bring a curse. And because Satan likes to hide behind things. And when he hides behind little things that you can't see, you know the word said little 11 spores a whole lump. All he wants, to do, wants you to do is just touch agree with just a little bit. It might not mean nothing much to you, but to him means everything. Because he knows that he has access now. And he knows that if you took that little bit and you didn't repent, that means he got a little bit more coming. Because Satan is a legalist. He's waiting for you just to agree with what he says and his words so that you will contradict God's words and then pride will come in. So no, then, then the thing is, now you're being blinded again. Getting blinded. And even though you, you, you've been working, walking with Christ for a while, he can still blind you. Because he comes where you can't see him at. Because he's very subtle. He comes and hides where you don't know the truth at. Or what you're spiritually ignorant at. So that when you're ignorant to the things of his ways and his tactics, you're not able to see. So that when he comes in there, you you know he's there. And he's been touching and agreeing with you all this time. Then when the deception comes, then it's too late. Because now you've been deceived. 
And now you're mad at God because you allowed that to happen when it was your responsibility to see those things. And you, know, you got to understand one thing about God. He'll bring correction to you first. He'll tell you, don't do that. He'll tell you certain things. Because he said that the Holy Spirit said he'll lead you all truth. Aren't we led by the Holy Spirit? So he's going to lead you to, don't do that. And then when, he's, when, when we don't listen to him, then he has to chastise us. And he said, don't, don't despise my chastisement. Don't despise it. Because if you despise it, then you don't love me. All I'm trying to do is correct you. You didn't take my correction, so I have to spank you a little bit to get you back into place because you was out of bounds. And I'm trying to get you back in place because you, you can't see. You don't see that train about to hit you. And it's coming quickly. And I got to get you back in place. And sometimes it don't feel good. Don't feel good. But that's the love of him. He's a, a father that corrects. He chastises, he disciplines, he loves of us, he gives us compassion. Even though a lot of people want to speak about his love. Well, God loves me. Yeah, he loves you. But his love is also in chastisement. His love is also in discipline. His love is also in correcting you. His love is also in protecting you and covering you. And he can't cover you if he can't see you as his own. He can't see us as his own because he wants to see you look like him. He wanted to see you talk like him. It pleases him to see his heart connected to your heart. And your heart connected to his. It pleases him. Because he always say obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. So when he see you in obedience, do you know you put a big giggle into his spirit? He smiles and he laughs about it. Because you know that Satan's always there trying to accuse you. Because when he knows that we're going to, God knows we're going to make, make mistakes. But he wants to see what you're going to do with that mistake and turn it around to make it right. It's part of life. Life has situations. There's issues that goes in life. And one thing people like to do is judge. People, we love to judge. Because when we hear, you know when somebody gets a phone call about somebody did something bad? Well, we hold that for, on them for life. Even when that person turned around and they started to, doing the right things and, and starting to be consistent in doing the right thing, they still hold on to, oh, but, but you remember back when he did this? Man, man God forgot about that. We need to let go of that stuff. If he forgot about it, we need to forget about it and keep moving forward together because he said unity that pleases him. And the devil likes to bring division and bring separation. Loves to bring division and separation so that we can't come together and work together and that we can be knitted together and so that we can fight against this evil one instead of fighting against each other trying to work out the good. Amen? Amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 11. It's going to be a short, quick teaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Corinthians eleven. Verse one. I have here said, now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the tradition just as I deliver them to you. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of the woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor his head. So we dishonor our heads by letting unsound doctrines come filtering in. We bring, we dishonor ourselves when we allow foolishness and ignorance come in. Because you got to understand something. Where it all starts at? Right here in your thoughts. 
And if it starts in your thoughts, then it congregates in your heart. And when it gets into your heart, now you're going to bring destructive words that come out your mouth. You can either bring life or death. And as you speak it out, it goes back in. So what it's doing, it's doing a full circle over and over and over again. And even when you get angry at somebody, and you know, some people go, oops, I done cussed you out. I'm sorry. As you put that stuff out there, it came right back into you. Now your heart's gotten hardened. Now you can't even hear God no more. Now God's trying to warn you, you need to stop that. You need to repent, and you just like throwing that on the side because now anger came in. Now you got to understand, when anger comes in, them demons come in as a cluster. And they're eating off your emotions. Now you're allowing them to have a meal off of your attitude. Because now you have access, and now you got to remember, now one comes in, now attached to that one comes bitterness. Now he brings his gang in. And then comes malice of words. He brings them in. Then he brings envy comes in. Then jealousy comes behind that. You know, it is a, the door could have been this wide. And then without repenting, now it opened a little further. Then it opened more. Then it opened more. Then it opened more. Then it opened more. Then the next thing you know, everything comes in. Because now you don't have discernment of doing what is right and wrong. Because now you can't even hear God. You think you're hearing God, but you're hearing the devil. You're speaking one word, but you're showing another. And that's not how it's supposed to be. If you're an apple tree, be an apple tree. Don't say you're an apple tree and bearing oranges. Amen? If you're an apple tree, be the apple tree. If you're of Christ, be of Christ. Because you know, at the end, the only person who's going to be fooled is you. And, discern and deception is going to have its way. And we're not, we're not supposed to allow Satan to have his way with us. He don't, he don't supposed to have, do whatever he wants to do with us. Because I was taught that we're supposed, to have, we're supposed to learn how to attack first. So that we don't have to go through these things like little children. We're supposed to be eating. we eat meat now, ain't we? If we're eating meat, then we're supposed to be mature in the things that we do now. Because we're supposed to be accountable for it now. We're accountable for what we do. Because we know what to do, and we're supposed to know how to do it the right way. Even when it comes against this flesh. Because this flesh speaks a lot. Doesn't it, y'all? Then the flesh say, I want this. I want to do that. Don't listen to him. He don't know what he's talking about. He ain't pastor. And then the pastor, he ain't God. Then what, who are you going to listen to? Then God tells you, I don't want to hear it. Then who are you going to listen to? You're going to listen to self. When God tells you to deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow because when it comes to something that has to be taken away from you, God's saying, give it to me. And you're trying to hold on to it. Because he's trying to give you something better. He's trying to show you something more instead of least. Amen? Let's go to Jeremiah 1. Praise God. Jeremiah 1. Verse 10. The word says, See you have this day. Set you over nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy and throw down, to build and plant. 
Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time saying, what do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot and it is facing away from the north. Then the Lord said to me, Out of the north calamity shall break forth, and all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all the families of the kingdom of the north, says the Lord. They shall come, and each one set his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem, against all the walls all around, against all the city of Judah. I will alter my judgment against them concerning their wickedness. Because they have forgotten me, burned incense to other gods, and worship the works of their own hands. These days are here. Wickedness is on this land much more today than ever. The, we was um, doing charity challenge yesterday, and you know we was we was in the midst of darkness. We was dealing with a whole bunch of people drinking and music was blasting and, and everything that was going on. They looked like they was having fun. What they reminded me was where I came from. Right? I looked at them. I said, yeah, I remember doing that. I remember running around like, like a fool. You know, the score, and we keeping scores and the score keeping coming back. I had, God had to give me the scorekeeper that was drinking, okay? And he'd come back all, they had to pull away his beer away from him a few times because he was old drunk. And he come back to, and he writing half words. And here's a guy who's supposed to have a business. You know, he's supposed to be a good example, man, you know, to the world con conditions. But he couldn't even do his job right because he allowed what? Access to a demon to have his way. And he comes and he throws the paper on my chest one time. And then, you know, when you're drunk, you, you're, you're, you're comfortable now. You know, you start saying things that you don't say when you're straight. <laughs> Now you can really know what the person's got on their mind, you know? <laughs> and then, they, then, you, and then you come up the next day and you say, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> the things that you said. <laughs> you don't even remember what you said because the demon had access to bring division. So we look at, well, I look upon all this stuff then, you know, because the knowledge that I had about the music and everything and the things I've been taught, the music that they were playing, a lot of that music, they, they was singing songs, worshiping Satan. They was talking about Lucifer being exalted and that he's going to come down and have his reign on this earth. Molly Sally and all the rest of the music that was out there that was being played and sang. And I couldn't stand a bit of it because I knew who the father of that music was deriving to and the souls that it was taking to hell. And it's up to us to be an example and say, no, I won't take that. I don't accept that. I'm not allowing you to penetrate into my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotion to take over it. And I'm going to take it home with me that you might fester on me in the night season and grow in me and take root. There's no place for that. Not in a believer. The believer is supposed to have one way and one way only. And that means to please their father and believe in his word, what he said, who you're supposed to be. Aren't we king's kids? Then we're supposed to act like king's kids. We're supposed to take on the position that he gave us and, and live this life and battle. Because if you're in the battle, if you're not in the battle, you become a what? Everybody knows this one. A casualty. And Satan will knock your teeth out. He'll blind you with two black eyes. Have them shut. And he'll damage your ears so you don't hear the right network. You think you listen to the Holy Ghost network, but you listen to a demon network that sounds like the Holy Ghost. Just like the Germans in World War II. They would tell the people, why don't you surrender? We won't hurt you. 
You'd be a fool to listen to that network because they would have killed you. The same way as the enemy that we fight against. It says, word says that when he gets you prisoner, he don't let the captives set free. Only through Jesus. That's how we got here. How many of us was looking for a savior to rescue us from our difficulties? Something was going on in our life and we needed some help. And so when God got us, he said, now I'm going to lay a law down to you. And I want you to follow this contract I got with you. This is my instruction. Basic instruction for leaving earth. This is your handbook. And I want you to be guided by this handbook to know what to do in situations. I give you my Holy Spirit so that you can understand my handbook. So that when difficulties comes, when a mountain comes before you, the mountain will overtake you. But you can use my words to overcome that mountain. You can move those things that seem nonsense and make sense to it. Because his word is value. And you just don't give his word to anybody. You know, he told his disciples, he said, I'm going to send you out in twos. Now, if they don't want to receive the words that you have, he said, I want you to turn around, wipe your feet off, dust that stuff off of you, and keep on going. Because I got somebody out there that's waiting for you. Now, everybody's going to receive what I have. But I'm going to allow you to go out and you're going to find out who is mine and who is not by the examples that they follow. Amen? You can't worship the devil and God. Either you're going to worship one or the other. You can't have two masters. You can't, you know, the word says a double mind. Man is unsettling all his ways. That means you can't trust him. Even though he looked trustworthy, he smelled trustworthy, or she smelled trustworthy. They look good. They might even have a good conduct about themselves. But on the inside, there's division. When, when you're around, they're this way. When you're not around, they're this way. They're against God. They're against His ways. But you got to understand something. We, yeah, we're not supposed to fear man, but you got to fear God. You got to understand, He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. So when you're doing b- bad things that nobody can see, He's still seeing it. There's an angel right there recording that stuff down. They're writing it down. As a matter of fact, they got, man... When that book come out, I don't want him to show none of my stuff. How about you? Because <laughs> they're going to show it to the world. <laughs> so you want to keep yourself clean. Let all that stuff get out of there. Because it's going to be a big movie screen. And God's going to show all your sins before you. He's going to show everything. Now, is this the way that I, I taught you? And he said that to us teachers, because anybody came through total freedom, they're a teacher. Anybody came from total freedom is a teacher. Anybody came from two, true ministries is a teacher. And he said, your judgment is much worse because you know how to, you, you don't minister to other people, but you're not walking it. That's what's going to be said, those who practice lawlessness depart from me. Because I don't see my character in you. I don't see my image in you. The things that you, like, yeah, you healed the sick, you did this, you did that, you did this, but you did it in your own name. You use my name because my name has power. Yeah, my name has power. I will cast the demons out in my name. But in you, I don't see me. I see you. That's when the word says deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow. Because that's the formula. The formula always works. It always work. Let's go to First Timothy.
And let's go to verse 12. And the word says, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy 4. <laughs> That's supposed to be there. <laughs> The apple don't fall far from the tree. <laughs> we be around pastor all the time. You get up here, you'll see, you'll be just like him. Because what you hang around, you become. I hang around pastor for many years. I learned how not to walk in the world. I made my mistakes, but I learned how to get out of them. I learned how to keep moving forward. If you don't press forward upon the mark, and keep on pushing forward. The enemy will get you. And take you back. And keep you there. Because he don't want you to find out who your true identity is. He don't want you to know who you are. You can't look in the mirror and just be tricked by what you see in the mirror. There's something deeper than what's on the outside. We're all spirits. We're just covered with this body. You hear what I'm saying? We're all spirits. And one day we have to go somewhere. We got to take it somewhere. Verse 12 says, Let no one despise your youth, but an example to be believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in what? Purity. Till I come again, attention to reading, exhortation to doctrine. Do not neglect the gifts that, you, that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself internally to them that your progress may be evidence to all. Your what? Progress. You ain't supposed to stay the same. How many people you see that comes, now, and we have a nine-month program. How many people you see come in, come in the first month, and in the nine month they're worse than they came in the first month? There was no progress. There was no progress. They came in, anybody can do time. This is supposed to be change. It's supposed to be change. It's supposed to be a progress of maturity coming up. What you did yesterday, you're supposed to be stopping learning not to do it no more. You're supposed to learn how to hate evil. Instead, keep on touching the evil. Oh, but this is my friend. I like this brother. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. You didn't rebuke him when he was doing wrong. So he got comfortable and he started sending more. And then he got you. You was doing good. Then all of a sudden you start falling away. And now you're trying to speak to other people and minister to other people, but you're still doing the same thing you, that you're supposed to be ministering about. It happens. That's because the Word says we've got to be watchful. Watchful for what? How about us? Forget about everybody else. How about keep ourselves first? Keep ourselves first so that we keep ourselves pure. Keep ourselves clean. And we're supposed to have discernment knowing what's holy and what's unholy, what's clean and what's unclean, not speaking words of perversion. Uh, yeah, this thing that goes on, the people be speaking perversion to each other. Or the guys ain't supposed to be talking to the girls because we got a, a ministry that protects each other. Or the girls ain't supposed to be talking to the guys because we're trying to protect you from what you can't see. But why? Why not? What you think he's doing it? Well, you see him doing it. You're supposed to tell him, yo, man, you ain't supposed to be doing that. And then he rebuke you. You walk away. Don't argue with him. You have upper management that can take care of that. Trust me, upper management will take care of those situations. I believe pastor will take care of that situation very clearly. A lot of people don't go to pastor about certain things because they don't want to hear what he has to say. Because they know that he hears from God. And just like the people was with, with Moses, and he said, Moses, we want to talk to God. So when God came to talk to him, he said, Moses, you talk to him. <laughs> we, we don't want to talk. You talk to him. 
and run away. Afraid. Afraid of what? Change. Change. Change is good. Change is good. Change can take you to higher heights than you ever could possibly thought that you couldn't reach. Change can make you see clearly the things that you thought was good, you find out it was really evil. And you want to change something in your heart so you can get closer to your father. How many of us want to get close to God? A little closer each day. How many of us know that there's something in us that holds it back sometimes? And we get stubborn. I know I do. My wife reminds me. <laughs> she reminds me sometimes, which is good. She's my helpmate. I need to hear that. Sometimes the wife has more information for us than we think they have. Because there's our soulmate. And if you're praying, and you're praying for each other, you think God's going to bring something to help you? Or do you believe your prayers? Then we have to walk out what we're praying. God, change me. Help me, Lord. I want your heart. Well, he's trying to give it to you. Do change. To change. And we have to be an example in how we live. Because now we have a lifestyle. Because it's a new lifestyle. And when you get in uncomfortable places, that's where God wants to meet you at. Because then you can trust Him. You're stepping into unfamiliar territory because it's a new day. Every day you're going to walk in unfamiliar territory because you're going to be challenged. Through the test. God wants to see, are you going to trust me? Or are you going to go back and trust your flesh? Are you going to trust me or trust your flesh? You got to go into new territories. But you got to go into new doors. As I was playing, you got to go through the new door and close that old one behind you. Because if it's uncomfortable, guess what you're going to do? You're going to back up. And back right out of what God is trying to bring you to and go back into that old door that was where you was trying to get out of. And try instead of closing that door behind you, so you can go into that area where He sent you at. So you can learn something new. Especially about you. Because our pride, man, our pride gets in the way a lot of times. And we all deal with it. All of us have a form of pride. And when everybody trying to show somebody else's pride, look at yours. If you can't submit to authority, look at yours. When you're blaspheming your own brother and you're having a fight, and don't even look at it saying, flesh and blood we do not fight against. <laughs> then we're supposed to be looking at the demon, not the person. Let's get to the, get to the root of it. Let's pull that root out. So we can destroy that demon that's destroying us. So that we can fight against this evil plan that the enemy has upon our, not only our lives, but how about our children's lives? How about our parents' lives, the ones that can't see? How about our brothers and sisters that's still out there in the world that they can't see? And, and we're supposed to be interceding on their behalf. Those who are lost, those people that don't know the way. Amen? Matthew 15, I mean Matthew 5. We have the words. We have the words. We have his words to speak. It's for those who believe. But you can't be an example and just speak words. You know, he said faith, hope, and love. It's the three things that we're supposed to have. But the most important thing is love. Don't forget your first love. Don't forget your first love. Because you can do all the works you want, but it would be like sounding, sounding brass to him. Cling, cling, cling. Lord, ding, 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 ding. He can't hear you. Because you're not showing the love towards him. You know, yeah, we're supposed to love each other, but if you don't have the love towards him, you ain't going to show true love to each other. 
Can't, you can't show true love to each other if you don't have the love of Christ. Because there's, there's a false love out there. And it's a soulish one. And it's called lust. Soulish. Matthew 5.13. I spoke this before, but the word says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses this flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by man. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Who? Where is he at? So if he's in heaven, and as the Lord's Prayer said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. On where? As it where? All right. We're supposed to be in reflection. What's going on in heaven? We're supposed to learn what's going on in heaven. Because we're fighting this demonic atmosphere. And we're supposed to fight this thing that's going on through heaven. This is the power of the Holy Spirit we're supposed to be fighting, not within our flesh. Because the flesh can only do but so little compared to what the spirit man can do. Because when you're connected to the spirit man, to the, within you, the spirit, it moves impossible things out your way. And the battle's not supposed to be yours anyhow. Who's it supposed to be? The Lord's. So if you're trying to take it on in the flesh, you're going to lose. Because you're fighting against God. Sometimes you think you're fighting the devil, and it's the Holy Spirit that's trying to take something from you. The Holy Spirit might be talking to you. He said, that's the devil. I rebuke you, brother. Oh, really? I think I just spoke about God's word. You want to rebuke his word? You can't rebuke the word of God. It's going to stand. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will stand. So everything else is going to what? Go. But his word. His word is powerful. And you just don't give it to anybody. You be careful how you use that word. You don't use that word when you're angry. Unless you have godly anger in you. Your word says, uh, be angry, but don't what? Don't sin. Because what happened? A presence comes in. And when that presence comes in, you welcome a demon to come and have access to you. It welcomes him into your home. And this is your home. This is your home. You're made of Rooms in this house. Everybody with me? And it's our job to keep this home clean. Because we don't keep this home clean. There's something that's waiting to come and rest in there. Now you understand when the demon is resting in you, you're going through all kinds of changes. And they're not good changes. But when you kick the strong man out and his demons... Now he's going through some changes, and you're free. So it's up to you to either go through some changes with the demon or kick him out and let him go through some difficulties because you got to understand something. His master is not nice. Then, matter of fact, we saw a video. It said there's no love in hell. There's no love there. Can you imagine being in the area there's no, not no love, but just hatred, anger, fear. Matter of fact, fear is the main thing. Because when you see a demon, what does it bring you? Fear. That's what a demon brings. Fear. You ever watch a ho horror show? What's it supposed to bring you? Fear. So when you go to sleep and it was intense in that movie, what'd you get? A nightmare. And what did a nightmare do? Wake you up out of a cold sweat and make you feel like you was in it. And when you wake up, you're like, man, thank God that was just a dream. <laughs> yeah, but you allow it to come in because you touched the degree. 
with the voice of the stranger. Amen? Because he has a voice and he has words also. That's coming. He's the Antichrist. He does the opposite what Christ does. As Christ comes, the Christ means the anointing one of the anointing. That means supposed to break the yoke of bondage. But the Antichrist is not then, he has an anointing also. But it's not called blessing, it's called curses. And he brings curses upon the people of God. He brings curses upon people. His word says he's a roaring lion seeking those whom he may devour. Who is he seeking? He already got the world. Who he's looking for? Us. Us believers. That's what he's looking for because he already got the world. Now he was trying, because he's been living in us since the beginning when we was born because we was born in sin. So as we were born in sin, he always think that we're his. That's come he's always looking for access to get us back. Because he was with us for a long time. And he was a good teacher. And he's trying to bring us back into him because he don't want none of us to depart from him. Because he knows that when you find your true identity, instead you be for him, you're going to come against his kingdom. And you're going to expose him. And he don't want to be exposed. Amen? Let's go to Hosea 6. I got just a couple more and we'll be done. Hosea 6, verse 3. Everybody there? The word says, Hosea 6, 3, Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain in the earth. He will come like the rain. We have to be patient. Let us press on to know him and allow the maturity of him to grow within us. Because when I'm going to tell you, I always teach this to, when I go to jail, I say, it's like this. You know, you, you're praying, you're worshiping, you're getting things in order. But, you know, you got to do something as you, as you wait upon them. So, you know, you have to start digging trenches. Get, that's preparation. Digging trenches, getting things opened up, areas opened up in the spirit room. So that when the rain comes, it has some place to go to. So it has some place to hold on to. So that now, now it has availability for you. And then the availability comes and he, you, the Holy Spirit will do it in according to how it wants to be used. We don't use the Holy Spirit. He uses us in the way that he wants to portray things for opportunities that come forth. So that when the opportunity to witness to somebody, now you speak to that person. Now you're going to speak to them through God's word. But the power of the Holy Spirit is going to back it up. And it's going to break some things in that person's heart to make them want to come, make them want to repent, make them want to pray for, get prayed over, make them want to change heart and do something different. Makes them want to, hey, if you don't want to do something different, the world, I always tell people when they're acting up, you know what, the devil always want to take, will take you back. He'd be glad to take you back. He'd be glad to, to, to kill, steal, destroy. What I call him is a rapist. I call him a rapist because here our father is telling us to protect us from this rapist because he takes your goods, takes everything you have. Everything that God's trying to bring to you, he steals it. And he rapes everything of you because then he leaves you naked. And then when everything is done, he's gone. He leaves you all by yourself. Where our father says he'll never forsake, leave us forsaking you. He'll never leave you. But by you not listening to him, you left him. And you went to the rapist instead where he's telling you not to go. Because he's trying to destroy you. And the father exposes him in his word. He exposes him in his spirit. 
He tells you the truth about this demon, this devil. But because our nature, because we was born in sin, we have a sin factor that we have to deal with. And we have to, the word says we're overcomers. We're supposed to be overcomers. We, we're not supposed to fall on the wayside when things happening. We're supposed to examine those things and put the word forward. Even though when you're struggling, put the word forward and speak to those mountains. Speak to those situations. Speak life that, so that when it goes in fertile ground that it may grow. It might not happen overnight. Most time it doesn't happen overnight. But it builds your character by trusting that you know that what he said, it will come true. It will come forth. Because his word has power. But you got to make sure you speak in the right ground. Right fertilization. Because when it gets that root inside of it, and it gets deep in the, in the ground, and when that, when that life comes up, that, that life of that stem comes up, and when the leaves come forth, because what the leaves have to do, it breathes off the oxygen, doesn't it? It breathes off of him. It brings life. And, it, and the trees bring life into the atmosphere, doesn't it? So it brings life within you. It makes you strong. You're rooted, grounded, and nothing will move you because you believe in his word that he established in you despite how you feel. Because truth they don't go hot and cold. Truth has only one way. It don't go by how we feel. Because we can get lost in our feelings. We only go by what he says and believe that it is so. Everybody with me? Amen. Let's go to Matthew 20. His words. Are we the example of his words? His words, not our own. His words. Verse 20, verse, I mean, verse 28. Matthew 20, verse 28. Word says here, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Being a good role model makes you a good servant. Being a good role model makes you a good servant. So as you serve for others, that's what we learn to do at Total Freedom. I serve. There's a many days I don't live my life. I got to do things for other people, to put other people's agenda before my own. It's a good thing because I'm sowing. And we need to learn how to sow in other people's life and learn how to do, do it accordingly to God's ways. You see, you can serve and still do it and still be evil-minded. But you can serve and do it godly-minded because, you know, the word says that you'll get your just reward right there. You know, you'll get your reward right there. That's, the, that's it. That's what you got. Or you can get that reward that's waiting for you in heaven. The one that he said, yeah, I'm going to put this away for you. I see what you did. Yeah, I saw that sacrifice. I'm going to put that away for you. I'm going to put this away for you. I'm, I'm, I'm storing up your house in heaven of all the richest and things that no man can take. Yeah, you just keep on enduring. You keep on persevering. You keep on holding on to my word. You keep on speaking my word. You speak on exalting my word. You keep on living my word. You keep on changing your lifestyle in a way that I want you to be, not the way you want to be. Now, you got to understand something. We all got enemies. I don't care how good you are. 
How faithful you are. Matter of fact, the more faithful you are, the more enemies you're going to have. Because a lot of people despise you if you're good. They despise you if you do less a little bit of wrong. Boy, they're going to hold on to that. See, I told you he wasn't that way he's supposed to be. <laughs> That's like Satan. He's an accuser of many. He stands before our fathers to accuse us when we do just a little bit. And then we repent. He'd he be like, oh, man, i got to wait for another one. And, and, and then he goes down and he, he sends his demons, deploy us, deploy us, deploy us so that we can slip again. It's our job to fight this enemy. To lay hold to what God's word has to say. And to believe that those things that we speak by what we believe will come forth. And most of all, to examine what you're speaking. Because you got to understand something. Some things we're speaking, it's not what God wanted to give us. Because it might overcome us. It might take us out. It might do you some harm. And he's not going to want you to have it. It's like... You ever had a little child just keep on bugging you over something? Just keep on, eh, 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 just pulling on you. Daddy, 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 please, 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 daddy. And you get tired of hearing, I told you, and you just say, here. You know that you didn't want to give it to him. It wasn't time yet for it. Like, like a seven-year-old want to drive your car. <laughs> it ain't time yet. And, I mean, why? Why? It's not time yet. You can't touch the pedal yet. <laughs> you don't even know how to shift the gears yet. But it's not time. You're not mature enough. You're not able, able to handle the car payment. You don't even have a job yet to have a car. Because it's not good just to give your kids everything. They have to learn responsibilities. They have to learn how to Keep the things that's there because when they come to a job or something, they won't even know how to work. They wasn't taught proper order. They don't know how to submit underneath our authority. You know, the boss come and tell them one thing. They ain't liking it. They say, I quit. Instead of going through the hardness was before them so they think they can endure because sometimes you might need that money to eat. Because there's no other availability. You know, a lot of people say, well, I ain't going to do it. But then they say, I'll never do that. Never say never. <laughs> never say never. <laughs> God will bring situations. Do you know the word says that God brings trouble to you? Because we're so foolish sometimes that he had to bring trouble towards you so you could call out to him so he could say, I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things. He had to cause it into you to answer. Because he knows where to touch areas in your life that you don't want him to touch. He knows to go places that no man knows where those places are at. And as a matter of fact, even you don't even know. But God will not be mocked. What we sow, we will reap. What we sow, we will reap. So we want to make sure we sow good things in fertile ground, speak his word forth, that we can be an example of, and that lifestyle will be a worship to our Father. Because that's the true worship, is your lifestyle. Because now you're a sweet aroma to his nostrils, and you're pleasing him. And he knows that you, you love to be underneath his protection, and you're governed underneath his wings. So when he tells you to go out to battle, he'll say, go. You get out there and do the battle. He said, come back. And he brings his arms around and protect you. And he said, go. You go back out and battle. He said, come back. And you get, see, now you're hearing this voice. You now you know when to go, when to come back. When to go, when to come back. When to go, when to come back. So you can always be protected. Because if he sends you forth, he's going to have protection to go forth with you. And then you're going to have protection to come back so you can rest in him. So that you can go back out there and do more. Then you come back and rest in him. Because he don't want you to be weary of doing good. He don't want you to go weary. Amen? Praise God. So now we're going to get ready for communion and offering. Get your hearts prepared for communion. 
I hope that everybody will get something out this word that they will take it with them. Like I said, I just had a little small, I had to put that together real, real quickly. 